<laughs> Mr Rand's undoubtedly for development. Uh, I've been a supporter of him in that regard for a long time. But today he called us freeloaders. And that's, uh, that I object to, because that's what we're not. We're the people who have got the initiative and daring to undertake enterprises like this one here we're seeing today. And everybody here, a thousand people can see it's a great enterprise. That takes initiative and daring and investment. Uh, we're, we're ready to work and make New South Wales prosper. But we can't do it with continuing impost. Royalties in this state have already risen to $3.75 a tonne and beyond. And now Mr Rand is telling us today that he's going to take that off the traditional owners of this land. Uh, we, we own land. Every coal company own land, owns land and the, the economy of this whole industry that is very marginal today and can be marginal in future markets depends upon ownership because it's only from the land that we create wealth for this state. We're ready to do it if Mr Rand will let us. He's for development. Let us cooperate with him. Don't give us a free ride. We don't want one. But don't call us freeloaders. and uh, we were travelling around in the lagoon uh, without any visibility and uh, we couldn't see the reefs. I mean, you were in trouble. So, um, <laughs> I've been answering a few questions. Uh, so, we, we carried on as best we I, could I with advise, the motor. Yeah. I did advise Rocky Radio, but... Uh, so, we're comfortable on the... Have you ever used the, the raft before? Had you ever tried it? Did it it's a one-off time. You, you blow it up. Yes, it worked very satisfactorily. Uh, when we got into difficulties, they were dressed warmly um, because this is one of the things you do. So How about food first? and water? We well, had, we had none. You had none. Most of us were sort of half trying to get to sleep, pretty drowsy and that, and just didn't even see her coming. We had her all tied up and that, and just bang, she hit her. We heard her coming and she hit and we were just over and it was black and we couldn't see anything and <laughs> legs and arms going everywhere sort of for a minute there, so sort of found the bottom and saw blue water, sort of dived out. Chris dived out and uh, come around and we sort of managed to get it, get it free and tip it back over the right way. At any time were you worried about not being found? Uh, not really. We knew the beacon was going, sort of, you know, we knew people are out looking for us and that. We had pretty well under control. It's become a waiting game, waiting for the weather to clear on Barrington Tops, because that's where Williamtown Radar last had a fix on the missing aircraft, and that was at 20 to 8 last night. They put its position as... about 30 metres, I suppose, away from the main uh, fuselage. 
Last Thursday, this exact helicopter made a forced landing on a road near Dungog. It had been part of the search at Glossa for the Cessna that went down in the Barrington Tops area. Today, the RAAF had this helicopter in the air, testing out those faulty mechanisms. Struck a reef with the wind on the beam, and uh, we started to roll over. What was there a point where you? We had no fears at that stage. We had, we had no, fears. no fears. We were in trouble. No, <laughs> we had no fears. We just had to uh, ensure Barbara realised we were in trouble. She was putting warm clothes on the children and uh, putting the life jackets on, and we realised we had to um, uh, well do the right, do what we had to do. How much time did you have to uh, to get off the boat? Probably about uh, two or three minutes, I would imagine, uh, between when we left, when we the boat started to heal and when we got into the life raft. How Was there a point where you thought, we are not going to be able to get back? There's always this yes. point. Always. Yes. How did you cope with that? We got back. It was frightening for us, so you can imagine what it was like for a two-year-old boy. It'd be horrific. The Mines Rescue Squad, the people who are professionals at this sort of business, have nothing but praise for the early work that was done here at Palmdale. And just to make sure that there won't be another accident like this here at Palmdale, a front-end loader has been brought in and they're filling in the borehole in which two-and-a-half-year-old William Farr was trapped for more than eight hours. It was 11.30 this morning when what management describe as a small fall occurred four kilometres from the entrance here to the Liddell State Mine and about 150 metres below ground level. Three men were trapped in the mishap. One of them was dragged out alive. He's John James, age 40, of Cessnock, who's now in a satisfactory condition in Singleton Hospital. However, two men died in the mishap. They were John James's younger brother, Alan, aged 28, from Cessnock, and Merv Schubert, aged 58, of Scotts Flat near Singleton. A total of nine men were in the production crew working in what's known as D Parallel here at the mine where the accident occurred. The minor driver was protected by a cage and was uninjured. The other five men were luckily not in the vicinity of the fall. It took workmates about 45 minutes to free the injured man and the two dead bodies from the collapse. The Kurugang operation is not to be confused with the temporary loading of wood chip from Carrington. Here the wood chip has come from the softwood pine forests around tea gardens 
and the whole operation is due to last only a couple of years. It was in a remarkably low-key way that the Premier announced the approval for the two giant smelter projects. The surprise came with the fact that the public inquiry into the Alcan extension has now been abandoned. Most people probably thought the Lochinvar smelter would go ahead. The Premier was one of them. You now say that a public inquiry into the Alcan extension would serve no useful purpose. Could that be interpreted that the Lochinvar inquiry served no purpose? Oh no, the uh, Lochinvar inquiry elicited uh, information, uh, certainly statistical information in relation to uh, uh, fallout pollution and so on, uh, which uh, really meant uh, that the inquiry, although it was looking at Lochinvar, produced material in an overlapping sense uh, with the Alcan smelter as well. And uh, I think that's what really persuaded the local council uh, not to uh, seek uh, to object. Uh, and uh, allowed us to proceed in the way in which we're going. Namely, there was enough information came out uh, that really covered both uh, the developments. Part of the order from Rear Admiral Doyle reads as follows. The Chief of Naval Staff has directed that Her Majesty's Australian ship Tobruk is to commission at Newcastle on 23rd of April 1981. Accordingly, you are to proceed to commission her for service in the Royal Australian Navy and use utmost dispatch in preparing the ship for sea. Brisbane will be the base for HMAS Tobruk from now on. It will arrive there on the 1st of next month and then begin 14 months of workup and evaluation exercises with almost every type of Army, Navy and Air Force unit. Richardson, Dr O'Connor, members of the staff here and members of the council, my Lord Bishops, the uh, subsequent generosity.
it's uh, quite startling when one first sees it. Well, not being an art critic, perhaps it's not appropriate for me to comment. What do you think of the painting? Lovely. It's not by any means uh, an involved painting. It, I'm amazed at its simplicity. Could I ask you what you think of the mural? Oh, I think it'll make it good for kids. Well, Robin, in addition to the opening of the City Hall and the opportunity for many visitors and residents to come in and see the City Hall, we have a range of coach tours operated throughout the Hunter region and also many cruises and wildlife parks, many other tourist attractions offering, offering special facilities for visitors during this week. It's developing all the time. Um, the Australian Valley has been popular for a long time now and I think the regional companies are really becoming in their own right um, very popular companies as well. Well tonight's performance of Capalia has generated tremendous interest in Newcastle. Is this something that's copied around Australia? Yes, especially with the three-act ballet. Um, but it's yes, right down deep. It's uh, a big thing. Uh, being so long in the industry, uh, together with uh, terrific men. Uh, the young chap that you were just talking to, uh, and I uh, work here with possibly the greatest men that has a gang or ever in Australia. They're few and far between. What's the industry like now compared to the old days? Ah, uh, it's a push button today with number seven shovels and picks. You dig it out of the solid, shovel it on, have to come in and shovel it off. No tips, nothing. There wouldn't be much craftsmanship left, would there? Not now, no. Anything that uh, can't be made by machines is not made these days. What the shareholders get in the dollar is entirely dependent upon what I receive for the Charlestown, Mayfield and Hunter Street stores. I've always said that, but I am hopeful that it will still come out at about 80 cents in the dollar. You have for people talking about Charlestown and Mayfield and as yet no definite offers for Hunter Street. So what, how much time will it be, do you think, before people will see some money? I don't anticipate that the shareholders will receive any money until those three stores have been sold. However, if I'm able to make an interim distribution, because I've sold some of the properties, I will certainly do so, but I would say that on balance, unless I can achieve a very quick sale of those three stores, the shareholders uh, may be waiting possibly another six or nine months before any money is available to distribute to them, bearing in mind that when a distribution is made it has to go out to 80,000 members and uh, that costs some $25,000 in postage. So preferably I would like to send one distribution out, but I appreciate that there are many members who are urgently in need of the funds and therefore uh, I will just have to evaluate the situation if funds do become available. Well, about four o'clock I got up and I was just in the carpet, you know, and then I rushed to ring, ring up and the phones were all cut out, so I ran up the street and someone had pinched the receiver off the box, so then I had to run up the top of the hill to get my brother-in-law, and uh, when I got back it was at least six inches to a foot inside by then, you know, just a matter of lifting everything up out the road. Did you begin to worry just how high it might go if you had to move out? Well, we got told that high tide come at 11 o'clock, well, 18 inches, so that's when we started panicking, you know, but... It's now starting to drop and we'll probably be all right now, I think. 
In Nelson Bay, landslides and minor flooding are the order of the day. And here at Nelson Bay Primary School, up to two metres of water rushed through the buildings early this morning. There is still about 1.4 metres just laying in the street and through the school premises. School principal Ted Brown says it may be a week before everything gets back to normal. It seems ironic that the, this has happened only a day after a 48-hour strike by school teachers, but as some of the children said, they don't really mind. All right. As in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Lesson is from John Allen. Of course, this time last week, we would be gathering together. May together also find eternal life. Is important to find. living. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the rest of day and full of trouble. Comes forth like a flower and withers. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ died and was buried and rose again for us. We shall change our lives and believes in me shall never harm 23 over the page 
shall help them, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff come. Ready to go. I'm psyched up and fired. You're going to be listening to the radio and watching the television? The weather condition for Des Renford's swim are perfect. It's a warm, clear day and there's a light northeasterly blowing to assist him with about six knots. But that could all change later today as there's a southerly change predicted. <laughs> I don't think anything else is going to stop us. Once I'm in there, we're there to stay. For those of you heading up to Tanalorn this weekend, the weather's fine and the water is certainly cool. Of course, there are other long weekend activities, including the Upper Hunter Wine Festival, the Central Coast Games, and of course, the NBN-sponsored Oyster Festival at Foster Tun Curry. As a result, traffic is expected to cause major problems and all available police will be on duty. No, uh, we're not uh, giving up the fight. Uh, we, uh, in conjunction with East West Airlines, intend through them to maintain a presence in Newcastle. Now, East West Airlines operate F-27s. They are an F-27 operator. They are very efficient. And uh, they uh, will quite ably uh, provide the service that we have provided and make money. The, uh, that is the difference between ourselves and East West Airlines. Oh yes, I think they're adopting a passive attitude. I'm staggered at the speed with which the decision has been made to uh, abandon Newcastle. The changes will affect all Catholic high schools in the Newcastle region, including Maris Brothers Boys High, an institution in Newcastle for more than 80 years. But according to Bishop Clark, the decision was unavoidable. In making the decision that we have, and taking into account all the various factors, we had no alternative but to make all the schools co-educational, to have given some sort of a choice between single sex and co-education, co it would have disadvantaged a great number of people, especially the girls. How do you think the diocese will react to your decision? Well that's very difficult to say but since we have been at this for quite some time and the people have been alerted and informed of the issues for over a considerable time, they know that some some move is underway, that some decisions have to be made and uh, I would think that the majority of people, once they are in possession of the facts which we, we hope to give them as backup material to the decision, uh, they will see the reasonableness of it and see how the, uh, the decision could not have been otherwise than the one we are making. That's all very heavy, hard stuff. But this is more or less for the prep. Just around the neck. 
Thank you.